All right, well, what about uh, things that change when a patient has advanced stage disease already at the time of presentation? Does your, does your first line treatment change? What are your options? How do we go about this? So uh, this is a very different uh, discussion than what we've been having. The 95 yeah, I changed gears on you. You did. <laughs> the the 95 percent statistic that Craig gave out earlier is now in advanced stage disease probably about a 70 percent statistic. So only about 70 percent of people may be cured with initial frontline therapy uh, if the frontline therapy is ABVD based. We might be able to cure a few more patients with more aggressive regimens, but then we get into some of the late effects that we spoke about. I think the other major difference between advanced stage and early stage disease beyond outcome is the fact that at least the adult practitioners in the vast majority of cases feel that the role of radiation therapy is minimal and that the cure for advanced stage Hodgkin disease rests solely on chemotherapeutic is that approaches. Is because the horse is already out of the barn effectively? I think that you know when you have disease that are in many uh, parts of the body, the amount of radiation that you would have to give uh, is felt to be uh, not tolerated well. And at least um, the analyses that have been done uh, have suggested that there just isn't an impact of radiation therapy in these groups of patients. And then if you think about it at the, at the end of the day, what do patients from Hodgkin lymphoma die from? They usually die from uh, pulmonary Hodgkin lymphoma. So it would make no sense to use radiation therapy with a patient who has multiple pulmonary nodules. Uh, even if there was a 10, 13, 10 to 13 centimeter mass in, in the groin, for example, um, that's not going to cause the patient's demise. The shortness of breath syndrome is going to cause the patient's demise. But if you, if you actually take a look at what we were discussing before, and I will meld this back into age, 70% um, versus 95% is a big difference. Mm -hmm. And older people, uh, versus younger people. You would be more willing, I would be willing to bet, to pound away at somebody with a, a therapy which might give you greater long-term disability if that person's life expectancy, being 60, 70 years old, was different than a 25-year-old. I think yes and no. I mean, I think still most oncologists are highly motivated to cure the underlying cancer. And in fact, as much as our discussion is trying to be to maximize quality of life during and certainly after treatment, our first priority is to cure the cancer in most of these situations. I think in the early stage setting, we have the luxury, having essentially declared victory on the cure, to focus on the long-term toxicities where we may not have that luxury in advanced stage disease.